Hey folks, Dan here. Before we get into it, if you enjoy these videos, please hit the like and subscribe button. And keep in mind that these are my own thoughts, opinions, and ideas. These are not meant to be, nor should you take them as investment or trading advice in any way, shape, or form. Do your own due diligence, put in the work for yourself, and make your decisions based on that. Enjoy. All right, folks, here we are on Tuesday, December 3rd. We're going to take a look at NNDM today. So I get an ungodly number of messages <laughs> to take a fresh look at NNDM, which surprised me, but you know, I'm happy to come do it. Um, and that is the way to request it. Just send a message, leave a comment, what, whatever. Um, but it, uh, yeah, I've just been surprised as to how frequent they've come in. So a bit too much to ignore at this point. So here's what I'm going to say off the bat. Uh, we're going to start here in the Weeble chart. And we're going to look at the levels, and then we're going to take a look at the EMAs, and then we're going to flip over to the Think or Swim study, and we'll take a look and see how things are situated there. I think the more compelling view is the Weeble chart. I think it sort of speaks more. And so here's what I'm seeing from a support and resistance level. So we have had all of these levels on the chart for quite some time. I think that they're playing out really well. You know, if you zoom in to an intraday time frame, like a 10 minute, you know, you see this was yesterday, right? It shot up. It came within a couple pennies of that uh, 228, 229 level that we have. Came back down, tried to settle on this 221, which it was mostly doing, but then fell straight through it this morning and then settled on wrestling with this 216. So, um, you know, the levels to me are holding up quite well. Here's my concern. If, if I'm an NNDM bull, this is my worry. You see this support level here and then these three consecutive support levels, these are all in the same range, right? These are all right along this 206 range. You see the dip down here to 204. You see the dip down here. On these days, this low was also 204. And so what we're seemingly seeing, as far as you know, my two cents go, is essentially a quadruple bottom that is just having no luck materializing into a meaningful push through any wall and like any cell walls that get at any substantive meaningful distance from this just incessant downtrend that you see we zoom out here to the weekly i mean this is what the uh <laughs> the weekly chart looks like right i can get all the price action in on the weekly chart and this is what it looks like and so that's what it looks like to me that four times, I mean, even if you scroll back a little further, right, you see back here in 2022, buyers showed up at that same place and they showed up there again in January of 2024, in August, and in September, and then again in November. And so what this starts to look like to me is, yes, sometimes you get some nice pushes off of that level, right? Nice pushes. So if you buy at that level and it pushes, sure, you can have some some gains. But, you know, I feel like I'm getting messages from people that have just been holding this forever and a day. And this just looks to me like at some point, the price is going to dip back down and test that 204, 205, 206 level again, right? That sort of approach toward two. That's the psychological aspect of it, right? It's that people are, you know, the trading sentiment is, are we really going to push this to two? At some point, my worry would be that the buyers don't show up because they've showed up so many times. And what have they gotten for showing up? Well, if they played it really well and really strictly, right? If they were very strict in their execution and they played just initial push pushes, sometimes, right? Not always, right? If this push happened, like that wasn't much of anything and it sold off pretty quickly. This most recent push was even less of... of something and is selling off really quickly. So if they executed a really great plan, maybe they made some pretty short-term quick turnaround gains. But for folks that bought in and have been holding that dip buy through this period of time, they're back where they were basically. And who knows, maybe along the way they ended up chasing some of the run, right? Maybe they chased some of this run thinking that, you know, here comes the moon. <laughs> and so then they're just rapidly underwater. 
So that would be my worry, is that it's it's closer to being back to this 206 range than it is being far away from it. And I don't know how much longer the buyers are really going to show up in that range, being that they've done so so many times recently, and that there's been probably, for most of them, minimal to little to negative payoff for those dip buys. I mean, if we look at um, the position cost distribution here, total profited shares, 42%. I'm even surprised that it's that high, to be honest. But there's a lot of folks that are underwater here and are just sort of holding and hoping, you know, that it's going to work out. But um, it doesn't seem to me that there's a lot of strategy <laughs> in this. Now, this is just from a chart perspective. I know that somebody's not going to have listened this far and they're going to just go nutso in, in the comment section about some fundamentals or some share buyback or some insider trading, you know, something that's just not the purpose of this video. This is a chart video. Um, so you can get all that other stuff elsewhere or heck, I guess if somebody, you know, put some really useful info in the comments, then it'll be there and you can look at it. But just know I'm not trying to tackle those things. But if you want to fill in folks on the fundamental case or, you know, whatever it is, um, you can you can do so in the comments. Um, but that's my worry from a chart perspective. So I'm just going to lay that out there at the beginning. Now, if we take a, a slightly different look at it and look at the EMAs, here's the other thing that's happening. Previously, it, see this gray 183 EMA? So it's the long-term EMA that I track. And what I look for is breaks that sustain, right? The problem with this break, for example, was it broke through it and it came down to retest it. Did the, it did the perfect thing, but then it just perpetually failed. And then it gave way and then it sold off down to 206, right? This didn't come down, test it, and then fly high, which is what I would look for if it's going to be a, a true run uh, over the 183. Uh, all signs were looking good at this point, but it just, it, it couldn't maintain it and it's just flubbed and foiled and off it goes. Now, recently, you know, it's tried to do that again. And of course, when it returns to it, right, it gets this very brief bump off of it, but then it just loses it. So same idea. But then what do you see as time progresses? As time progresses, more and more, it just sort of wrestles with it or resists, right? It shrugs right off of it, has an incredibly brief blip above it, but it can't even drag the short-term EMAs through the 183, which is what it did back here, which is what it did back here, right? And so it's seemingly losing less and, sorry, it's losing more and more steam as time goes on. Um, these attempts at the 183 just become more and more lackluster. They hold it for a shorter period of time. They more often than not are just rejecting right off of it as opposed to trying to even push through it. And if they do push through it, they don't have enough gusto to drag the shorter term EMAs through it. So again, that to me is, is sort of saying the buyers aren't wanting to come in, in in places and in patterns where they were willing to come in previously. Um, and that is often the byproduct of that <laughs> that buying pattern, you know, going poorly, repetitively. And eventually people run out of money, lose patience, whatever. Um, sorry, I have bad uh, allergies here or whatever. Um, now, the volume shelves that, that you see here, you know, it's sort of like right in the thick of it at the moment. But that just, again, it just puts it back down to expecting buyers to come in right around this 206 level again. And it's really thin down there, right? And so, again, my concern, if I'm an NNDM bull or if I'm an NNDM long-term holder, I feel like I'm holding a bag, how many times are folks going to show up there when we can see that it's just, it's just intrinsically really thin, um, sort of empirically speaking, it's very thin there already. So um, from a chart perspective, I don't see it. I don't see the signs. Now, could there be catalysts? Sure. Could there be some great fundamentals that come through? Sure. Um, analyst ratings? 
who knows, just meme qualities, anything of that nature that could swing it, maybe. But to me, the chart looking like it does, you know, <laughs> I, I feel like it would, if, if it's going to have any sort of meaningful turnaround, like, like not just sort of like a flash in the pan swing um, because of, you know, a short term catalyst or a one off or even a two off catalyst um, or just sort of, you know, meme status flaring up or something like that, yeah, it might give you a brief swing. Sure, maybe. But sustained like movement to the upside, I, I don't see it happening short of just, you know, for lack of a better term, incessant bullish catalysts sort of hitting, you know, repeatedly in relatively short time frames in between them, right? So you would need this like successive motion of, of positive catalysts coming in and and maybe it could happen. But for me, that's what I would feel that I would need to get a sense that something can turn around here. Um, and like I said, that's from a catalyst and fundamentals and sentiment perspective. I'm just talking about from a chart perspective. I, I just I don't see it. Now, looking here on the think or swim, I'm not going to belabor this <laughs> too much. It's been like pretty flat, right? You get trigger, fire, nothing really happens. Trigger, fire, comes down a bit, right? So it goes up a bit on the fire, settles, compresses, uh, re-triggers, fires again, comes down a little bit, right? So then you end up just sort of flat, up a little bit, down a little bit, triggers in between. It's triggering once again right now, as it's at the mid-range of the channel, as it's at the baseline ATR for the December time frame. I, I'm not expecting much of anything, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, that's just what the recent past has shown. It's triggers, fires, you know, in, in many other stocks, it would look like a great setup. In this one, I don't see it, again, unless there's some catalyst that comes through, but that's not a chart thing, right? So if I'm just looking at the chart, that's why I'm saying I don't see it if I'm just looking at the chart. Sorry if I made a bunch of NNDM bulls sad with this video. It's not my point, not my purpose. You can be as bullish as you were before watching this video, you know, if that's your prerogative. Um, but I'm just saying, if I'm looking at it, these are the things that I'm seeing, and this is the sentiment that I'm walking away with, and here's why. So those are my two cents. All right, folks. Well, I hope that your trading week is off to a good start. And as always, I appreciate you watching, and I will see you in the next video.